Hi, this is Mark, and we're just going to go through some of the basics of the SmartBoard software. I'm doing this on my laptop. Um, you could either have the software on your computer, or you would be using it directly on the SmartBoard itself. There's really no difference. If you look at the SmartBoard itself, you'll notice the pens in front of you and the eraser. Um, those pens can be used on the board, obviously. You could also select a color and simply use your finger on the board, or anything else to use um, um, to activate, to draw, or to write on the board. Uh, but for purposes of this, I'm doing this on my computer just so you can see a lot of the tools. Um, the first thing we're going to start with are the pens. So if you click right on that little box right there, you'll see your pens. And you'll get a bunch of choices. And basically, over here you'll see your ink colors and line styles. If you click here, you can select different color pens. Selecting here, you'll get a different you know, line shape, uh, line styles, dotted lines, arrows. And this last box simply is transparency. You can go from pretty transparent to pretty non-transparent. And it's just how you know what, what it'll look like on the page. Again, I'm doing this from my computer, but you could do it um, either from the computer that your smart board is attached to, or with your finger directly on the smart board where you see my cursor, you'd simply be using your finger. So again, you could take the black pen. Again, this is my finger, or this is my mouse cursor. You could be using your finger or one of the pens on the smart board, and then you can write just like that. Okay. Want it to change it to red, come on back up. Change it to red up there. Just as simple, simple, simple as that. And if you click the little arrow at the bottom, it'll give you some choices of pens. Calligraphic pen is pretty cool. Got crayon. Looks just like the crayon. Your highlighter, if you wanted to highlight text or something else on the page. Creative Pen gives you a lot of different types of inks like that. If you see what I did, I selected Creative Pen right here, and these inks changed again. These are just kind of fun little colors, tie-dice. You got some smiley faces here. You got some snowflake stars. Some flowers. So again, that's Creative Pen. Magic Pen is pretty cool. There's two things you can do, a couple things you can do with Magic Pen. The first thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to draw a circle and watch what happens. That circle turned into a spotlight, see? I can use that circle and I can look around the page. Pretty cool if you have things you know you wanted to highlight or have students find things on the page, sight words, numbers, if you wanted to really focus in on part of your lesson. Another neat thing about the um, Magic Pen, you can draw a rectangle. And that rectangle allows me to zoom in on different features of my board. So again, the Magic Pen is pretty cool things. I've seen people do zoom-ins with art, or if you're really trying to see a piece of a photo you have up here, or a certain word, um, things like that. So it's just a kind of a neat feature on the Magic Pen. Shape Recognition Pen. Let me actually erase some of this quick so you can see this better. Shape Recognition Pen is exactly what it is. You can draw pretty close to a shape and it just cleans it up for you. There's a triangle, circle, square. Sometimes it doesn't recognize. You gotta be pretty accurate, but um, if you drew a weird shape like this, it's gonna kinda solidify the lines, but it's not really a shape. Um, but it's just a neat thing if you're trying to make a lot of shapes quick, make a diagram, things like that. Um, it's another neat thing for the pens. So those are my pens. Um, go back to here. Obviously, there's your inks again. Your colors are here. Over here, your lines. And again, your transparencies over here. That's just a quick overview of your pens. Um, next, Right next to pens is your eraser. You can pick the size of it. Again, you can use the eraser on the right. It comes with the smart board or do it just basically with your hand or with your cursor. Um, and then you can erase. Now notice what happened there. It erased the ink I had over here, but it didn't erase the objects that were turned into it. So in order to erase those, what I need to do is select my cursor, click on them, click the drop down, and delete. I just want to show you that again because that's kind of important. 
I'm going to take my pen. I'm just going to draw right over here some scribbles. Again, that's with my pen. Over here, I'm just going to put a square, a quick square. Okay, a couple quick squares. If I go back to erase, grab my eraser. There's the marker I have on the board. I'm going to erase that. That's just marker. If I try to go erase over here, nothing happens. And why? It's because these are objects. So what I'm going to do again is go to my cursor and select my object. Click the drop down menu and simply delete them. Well, a couple of the other features up here, you'll notice your tool, your, excuse me, your toolbar. And basically right here are the arrows. I have two pages open. I want to show you. I'm going to go back to page one. Basically, all you do is click this arrow if you want to go to page two. Back to page one. Back to page two. Now, if I wanted to add another new page, simply go to this page with a plus sign. If I want to remove a page, click that OK. Notice what happens also when I hover my cursor above it. It says add page. It tells you kind of what the icons stand for in case you ever forget. If I wanted to import a file from my computer or I wanted to save, I can also do those right there. Okay. Right over here you'll notice a paste. If I had to copy and paste something in, you could also do that as well. Now these two arrows right here, if I was to draw something, all right, and I didn't want it, I could undo what I just did. If you want it back, I can redo. So it's simple. Undo, redo. Those are your basic tools right up here. Okay, we're going to look at a few of the other tools right over here. Again, if I have the arrow selected, basically what that means is I'm a mouse. I'm a mouse cruising along. I got my arrow. I can click on things, click on things, click on things, click on things. Okay. Remember, we just looked at our pens here in the magic pen. Right up here is a neat little thing. It's some shapes. Again, you can pretty much select and grab your shapes. Okay, simple shape creator. You have more down here. You can fill colors or change the line colors and things like that as well with those shapes. Um, some more shapes over here you can play with. Make some shapes. Now you'll notice that if, if I wanted to move one of these shapes, it keeps making new shapes. And why is that? It's because we always have to remember to go back to our arrow. Our arrow turns us back into the mouse, okay? So it's just in the shapes. We gotta go right and that'll allow us to be a, become a mouse again and move our shapes around. You'll notice when I click on the object, a little drop down menu up here and it comes up. There's a dot down here and there's a green ball right up here. The green at the top simple, if you click it, you can spin the object, tilt it around, play with it that way. Okay. The little dot down here is simply to make it larger and smaller. Click and drag, click and drag, just like that. And then right up here it gives you a whole host of choices. If I was to clone it, it would give me another triangle. Cut, it would take it away. I could copy and paste or delete. Another nice feature is I could lock it. Now if you have two, um, if you have an object you can lock it in place that way if you had an activity with columns or things like that and you didn't want certain things moved it would lock them in place. Um, you could lock two images on top of each other that way if you had like a, something labeled you didn't want them to separate, but you could want you could move them. You could put lock, but allow move. So the images would be locked together, but you'd be allowed to move them. Okay. Flip, obviously. You could flip it left and right. Another neat feature, and we're talking about object. It's called Infinite Cloner. An Infinite Cloner basically turns your object into something that you can copy and paste over and over and over again. It's a nice feature for quick copy and pasting. Also go back to your main object. You have a link. 
can insert a link into any object. So if you have a picture of something and you want it to link to, um, if you have a picture of a line and you want it to link to Wikipedia and line, you can do that. Um, I have this circle, for whatever reason, linked to Google. So if I was to link a new object, I would just type in the site, insert link, and you'll see this little blue button comes up. When I'm in my notebook, simply click that blue button. Down here, my window open for Google. Okay, so you can link just about anything you want. You could add sound. You could add a file with sound. A nice new feature here is you could record your own voice and attach it to sounds, which or a student's voice or whoever it makes it extremely quick to attach sound, which is awesome. So I'm just going to start recording here. This is a circle. A circle is round. I stopped my recording and I'm going to attach that to that circle. Now you notice two things. One, I linked to that circle. Move it over here. I linked to that circle to Google. Remember I did that. There comes my Google page. I also added sound to that. This, this is a circle. A circle is round. So you can think of the possibilities of this, how simple and easy it is to link some objects, link things and um, attach sound to them. Um, it makes everything quite a lot more interactive in multimedia. Um, last on here is properties. There's just a bunch of different things. You could fill the circle or whatever object you have. Your line style, if I was to click red, my circle would become red. Thickness of it. Um, it's basically just being able to touch it up. Animation, if you want your, if you want your circle or object to fly in, fly out, spin around. Uh, there's a ton of things you could do on there. With the objects we just talked about, I wanted to show you if you had text in here. Again, I'm using my computer, but you simply could use the smart board marker, your finger, whatever you might be using. Um, if I was to write a word on there, what I could do is highlight my word. You'll notice this box came around it. It's one object now. Go back over here, you'll notice a lot of the same choices I just had. You'll also notice one that's called Recognize Stop. If I click on that, what does it do? It turns what I wrote into type letters. Nice thing about that is I can go up here, I can change my fonts, I can change my sizes of it, I can also change my colors, the transparency, you know, just straight out of Word or Pages or um, change the italics, underline, center it, um, pretty much do any text type choices that you wanted to do. Um, if by chance it miss, miss um, translated what I had written, you simply go in and you could change it just like that. Okay, so that's a nice feature. Again, that was writing. Selecting what I wrote and recognizing it. Okay. While we're in here, I just want to show you another quick, neat feature of this. If I was to, I'm just going to use my shape up here for a second, but if I was to have an actual stop sign, okay, and I wanted to put the word stop on it just like that, right now we have two separate objects that are two separate, they're floating separately, but what if I wanted to lock them together, I could lay them right on top of each other just like that highlight it, and click on Group. And I'm going to group those objects. See what it did? It turned it into one object that I can manipulate now however I want together. So it locked that object together. And if I ever want to ungroup those objects that are together, I simply go up, go to Grouping, and I click Ungroup. Okay. You'll notice now they're two separate objects again. So it's a really neat feature. Um, just going ahead a little bit, I'm going to put some words on my page using the marker. Just to kind of review what we just did, we'll turn those words into text by selecting Recognize.
I want to show you what we have is the magic pen and the magic pen allows you to do a couple things one of which is to create a spotlight on your screen by drawing a circle the spotlight will be the size of the circle that you draw so I'm going to draw a medium sized circle see what that did it turned it into a spotlight on my screen fun you could use your finger and go around and find words find objects you could be as creative as you wanted to with it, so it's really kind of cool. The other neat thing is um, zoom in and out. So if circle was to spotlight. Zoom in and out, you draw a rectangle. It doesn't have to be around the word. I just happen to be doing that. And you could zoom in and out again with words, pictures, whatever you're working on. Okay, so just another neat feature of the Magic Pen. I want to look at the uh, tables that are available on your notebook page. Simply click the table button up here. You can create a table of any size up here by clicking and dragging the size of the table that you want. Uh, for purposes of this, maybe we'll do um, a 2 by 4 table just like that. Okay, there's my table. I'm going to move it up here a little bit just to move it up. Okay, now when you have your table, you can do um, re readjust the size any way you want to just by clicking it and dragging it up. Dragging it down, dragging it over. So the table is really manipulated. You can manipulate it right within your um, in your page. Um, I want to show you a nice, nice feature. If I was to go in here and just type, I'm just going to put um, dog. Again, I'm just doing this very quickly just to show you um, the feature. If you were to import, if you wanted students to drag images into these, um, I want to show you what it does. So I just made a simple animal chart here, okay? And if you'll notice that my dog is kind of big for the cell it's going to go into. So if I was to drag it, it resizes it just like that so it fits into the... Um, box you're in. You could be give, given a huge picture, whatever size, put it right over, drop it and it resizes it to the um, actual size of the chart and then you don't have to worry about resizing things and worrying about them being on top of the chart. Drag it, drop it, done. Another great feature is the ability to shade the cell. So if I wanted to shade over the dog, just click on the cell, click on the arrow, and add shade cell and you notice when I do that it covers it right up so if you could have four pictures in here student comes up to the board touches it reveals the dog underneath um, I did that by clicking on the cell adding sage shade cell and there you go so again the possibilities are really endless uh, but it just makes it so much more user friendly um, to add text to add pictures and it gives you the option to shade the cells as well. While we're still on this page, I just wanted to show another couple features. Um, one which is called a screen shade. If you remember back to when um, we used to use old overhead projectors and a screen, you might have had your teacher had a piece of paper on the um, page and kind of dragged it down so you didn't reveal the whole text at once or all the notes to keep your focus on where he or she wanted you to read. Same principle here. Click on screen shade. covers up everything but watch this click the buttons on the top you're able to drag it down if I wanted the students just to do one of these columns at a time could drag it over let's focus on dog then we'll focus on cat so on and so forth so it's a pretty pretty cool feature again you can go up down left right however you want to do it um, but it serves as just blocking things on the page that you might not want students to be focusing on. Um, it's a nice way to have your whole lesson created, but just focus on a certain spot so as not to be distracted. Simply click it to turn it off, and you're back to your normal page. Okay? Screen shade on. And screen shade off. Another kind of cool trick while we're in this is the ability to rub and reveal. Um, basically that means covering up something, your text, with a marker and 
erasing it to reveal what it is. So just as, it, as an example, I'm going to go to my pens. Okay, I'm going to select white because that's the same color as my background. I'm going to select the thickest one right here. And I'm going to color my word cat with a white pen. I got some of the table there, but that's okay. I'll do the same thing for dog. Okay. I'm going to go to my eraser now. If you had your students up there saying, what is this a picture of? Erase to find out. You could erase and reveal the word dog. Again, I was simply covering up my word in the same color as my background and erasing to find it. Kind of rub and reveal. I can do the same thing down here if I wanted to. Go back to my white pen. Cover that up and say erase to sign to find a picture of a dog. And there you go, just like that. So kind of a neat activity to do um, along with the um, tables or, or whatever you're doing, you could do that. If you had a plant, parts of the plant labeled, you could erase and find out which you know parts of the plant they are. Same with student names. Any activity you're doing, you could use it for another neat feature. Okay, we have our page back again, and we're going to look at the Smartboard Gallery quickly. Um, it's a place where you can find a lot of neat things. Um, simple toolbar, search bar at the top. So type in, type in cat up there. Um, gives you some related folders. Click on pictures. It gives you this says 47 different pictures. Um, of course, I typed in cat, so you see like catch and things like that. Um, but it gives you a lot of options. Interactive and multimedia is pretty cool. Let's drag that in there. It's the cat. Or well, already a sound file attached. Sound file attached to it. Okay. It's also got tigers. Um, notice how I'm doing that too. I'm simply taking it, dragging it in. You could also click on the arrow and insert it right into the notebook, just like that. Okay. There are also some notebook and file pages. Um, you can look at those and see if there's anything that you um, want. Since I typed in cat, you're getting category sorts and things like that that we'll get into some other time. Um, so simply you could search right at the top and see what you're looking for and get a bunch of different options like that. Okay. Try a different um, do pizza. Just got one picture of pizza. No sound attached. You get the idea just like that. Okay, so let's go back over here. If you did not want to search, you wanted to see the categories, you could click on right here. This is called Gallery Essentials. I click down on that. You have a bunch of categories. You can search for pictures, images, interactive things, things like that. So I'm going to click on Sports and Recreation. Um, just to find, let's go to football. You'll notice that we have pictures. We have some notebook file and pages. Quick new page up here. Um, so a neat thing, um, people are using these to start with sports teams and um, do playmaking, things like that. I just selected that and it gave me a whole football field. You can add players to that, symbols, and work on plays when you're in your uh, coaches meetings and things like that. So it's another um, option. But you can pretty much find anything you want in the Gallery Essentials here. Um, if you don't want to search by typing, go to a category, and you can look it up like that. People, Interactive Multimedia. Again, so there's more than pictures. There's interactive games and activities, too. That section seems to be the most updated. Um, so I'll keep checking back there for kind of cool things. Another nice thing is a, you'll notice a folder at the top above Gallery Essentials called My Content. If there's pictures that I constantly use all the time, um, if I do, um, if I was working on feelings and I wanted to make sure that that picture was easy access, I could simply click it, drag it, drop it in My Content. Um, if I was working on numbers and I had my numbers that I've been working on, I could put them out here. Um, drag them right into my content. Okay, and then you'll see that my numbers and my faces in there. 
That way when I come back and I'm making an activity, I don't have to search again. I could just go to my content and drag and drop. So it's another nice feature. I hope you guys enjoyed this segment of the SmartBoard training. Uh, if you can also check out the other video that has some of the updates from the new SmartBoard 11 software. Some of this overlaps, but a lot of the other video shows just the new features of SmartBoard 11. Um, a couple episodes coming up will show you the Activity Builder, the Lesson Toolkit, and the Smart Exchange, things like that. So keep looking um, for more videos to walk you through the SmartBoard and how the many possibilities. Remember to have fun with it. You can't really mess it up, so just enjoy and make some great things for the kids.